Getting a green card through research, a question I get asked about a lot from different students around the world who are interested in pursuing research and residency in the United States. And to answer this question, I brought a specialist, a lawyer who is experienced in visa related to physicians to tell us all about the route to get a green card through research. Welcome Naveen to the channel. Can you start by telling us about the different routes that international students can take to get a green card through research? Thank you. Delighted to, to chat with you again. Um, so for all the folks who are here doing research, they can certainly um, try to convert that to a green card process. Um, there are two separate categories where you can self-sponsor, which means that you don't need your employer to support your green card petition. Um, the first is for people who are ex uh, considered to be of extraordinary ability in the arts or science or business. And the other one is um, for people whose work is considered to be in the national interest. And so they have an advanced degree, their work is, um, you know, they're considered to be exceptional versus extraordinary, which is a, a different legal concept, I guess. Um, but, but in addition to that, that their work is um, in the national interest. I see. So the difference between the EB1, EB2 is that legal definition of extraordinary versus exceptional? And with exceptional, you also need to show that your work is in the national interest. I see. I see. So can you tell us about the, let's start with the research criteria for mm -hmm. The two of them. How many publications? This is the, the question I get asked from most students. How many publications do I need to have to be eligible? How many citations do I need to, to have to be eligible for, for each type of these visas? Yeah, so um, the extraordinary ability is sort of the, the heightened golden standard, you know, I mean, um, a lot of people refer to it as the, uh, the Einstein visa or you, you have to be a Nobel laureate to get it, which Yes, it's great, but most people aren't, um, and they still qualify. But it is a very high standard to meet, especially some, for someone who's um, just starting their career, because you do need to show you have substantial publication and that you're well renowned in your field. Um, the national interest waiver um, is uh, an easier criteria to meet um, than the extraordinary ability. So when people uh, ask us to assess their you know, whether or not they qualify for a self-sponsored green card process, we take a look at their CV and um, just to, to see how many publications they have. Um, there is no real magic number, but I would say at minimum there should be 10. And, um, and then among those, you know, they have to be more than just abstracts. Um, they, but there are certain fields that don't publish as much as other fields. Um, but but within the publications, um, you know, are where where are you on the list of authors? Are you at the very, you know, sort of one of six? Are you number one or two? That's important. Also, where was the um, the articles published? Um, the 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 reputation of the journal is really important. Um, the journal ranking, and then uh, and then the other thing we we always ask for is the citation record. So. Um, if you are just starting in your career, you you just don't have that that time, you know, to have these articles cited. So um, certainly, if having a few years under your belt helps with that citation history. Um, for extraordinary ability, the, it's gotten very difficult in the last couple of years. We we see a lot of requests for evidence, and so um, we would like to see. A, you know, citations in the hundreds, so closer to a thousand citations if possible. Whereas with the national interest um, waiver, having a hundred citations would be would be fine. Um, so certainly, extraordinary ability is a much higher standard to meet than um, than the national interest waiver. Awesome, and that's that's a great point that you mentioned because so many uh, IMGs are not aware with the idea of research and how much time it takes to publish. Uh, it, although publications take a lo long time, citations even take longer because yeah. paper has to be published and people who are citing your papers have to have published papers, which is almost double the time. And for you to collect 100 citations, that's a very long time, uh, unless your paper is extremely uh, influential in the field and people start citing it from the moment it's published. And if you're interested in learning about research, how to publish, I have a detailed course on how uh, to do publications from A to Z. So definitely make sure to check that out. 
Uh, Naveen, although the publication citations are two of the most important factors for this uh, process, mm -hmm. I know there are other factors that go into this equation, into uh, getting the green card through research. What are these other criteria? Yeah, so when immigration looks at whether or not somebody qualifies for a person as a person of extraordinary ability, the regulations um, basically state that if you don't have that one time achievement, such as a Nobel Prize, then you can qualify based on meeting at least three of these other criteria. So among them are, of course, the publications, which um, everyone really needs to meet. So, so that is one, authoring scholarly articles. Um, another one is judging the works of others in your field. Um, and this is for the extraordinary ability category. For that, what works uh, within the sciences is um, peer review. So if you have been reviewing journal articles, then we can use that to show that you've been judging the works of other professionals in your field. And so certainly getting on the roster of journals and, um, and taking the time to review journal articles is really helpful for an extraordinary ability case. Um, another one is poster presentations, you know, going out there and, um, and, and participating at conferences, presenting at conferences, um, really networking so that you, you will need to get reference letters from people who are experts in your field. Um, we like to see at least five reference letters and they should be ideally from people who are not in your program. So uh, that you're, to show that you're nationally renowned, you should get letters from people at other institutions. Awesome. I've always had that question in my mind. Are those who have publications and citations from other countries, let's say they were in China, they published a lot, mm -hmm. are they eligible to apply for this or the research has to be done in the United States? No, you can certainly use your research from, from your country as well. Um, but if all of your publications are you know, Chinese journals and the citations are limited to that country, that's a little bit harder to meet. Whereas if these journals are more regional or cited, you know, in a, in a more global sense, then that, then that certainly helps. Um, and for the folks who are doing research in their own country, um, it would be great to have at least one or two letters from people doing work or research in the U.S. to show that they're they're known, you know, in the field in the U.S. as well. Awesome. As you know, some IMGs are on a sensitive time because they have to apply to, to a certain time to residency. They have to, uh, if they're not applying, they will become old graduates and they need to get this as soon as possible. But mm -hmm. this requires time. Uh, regardless of the time that it takes to publish and get cited, the process itself, the application and getting the green card takes time. Can you give us an idea of how much is approximately that time the, until your approval of case and the adjustment of status? Yes, so the there is a premium processing that's available to, um, to the extraordinary ability category. Um, I do have to caution that the, the premium processing unit does issue a lot of requests for evidence. So um, we like to strategize a bit on when to request the premium processing, but that is an option for the extraordinary ability. Um, in fact, this week, the USCIS just announced that they're going to be opening premium processing to the national interest waiver category as well. Um, and that should be coming, um, coming up or becoming available in the, in the next few weeks. Um, the national interest waiver cases were taking well over two years for adjudication. Um, and so it, it is a great easier option um, historically, but it was taking a really long time, whereas the extraordinary ability was going a lot faster. Now that they're opening up premium processing for the national interest waiver category, I think um, that's going to be the way to go because it is an easier standard to meet. Um, the national interest waiver, I, I also want to note is it falls under the what's called the EB2 category. So within the immigration employment scheme, there are different preferences, there are levels. Um, the first preference are the priority workers and they include people of extraordinary ability. The second preference are for people who have advanced degrees um, or you know, they fall under this national interest waiver category. And the this becomes significant, the EB2 versus EB1 discussion, 
if you are from a country like India or China, that's uh, oversubscribed. And so folks in, who are born from those countries, they have a much longer wait to get a green card um, if they're in the EB2 category versus the EB1. So for Indian nationals and Chinese born nationals, um, they even if they qualify for the national interest waiver, they really want to try for the extraordinary ability because it's it's a you know it's a difference of years for them. Even to get this uh, application approved. Well, to get the application approved, but then ultimately to get the green card, um, they they are in a, a a waiting line of you know ten plus years um, to actually get the green card. So they get the the application approved uh, like any other applicant, but from the application approval to the green card, that that's where the wait happens. Yes. I see. Okay. And another question I get asked from IMGs, if they're on J1 now, because most residency programs sponsor the J1 visa, mm -hmm. which comes with the two-year uh, two home residency requirement. If someone did research and then they entered the residency program now on their J1, is that an option for them? That's a great question. They are subject to that two-year home residence requirement. So they can file the petition, which is to, you know, the actual petition to say that they're a person of extraordinary ability, but they're not actually able to obtain the green card, file the adjustment of status application, or um, go through a green card process until they have fulfilled that two-year home residence requirement, either by going home for two years or um, getting a waiver of that requirement. I see. So they can get the application approved, but they won't get the green card until they either get a waiver or they fulfill that two-year home residency requirement. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Any final tips, any final advice about the process of getting a green card through the research route? Uh, yeah, so the... It, it does seem that the Biden administration is really trying to encourage the, that extraordinary ability route for people. Um, they're very interested in obtaining talent, you know, who fall under the, the STEM field, and, and certainly medicine falls within that. Um, so they're trying to make it a little bit easier and more clear on, on how to um, apply under the national interest waiver category. And just to keep in mind that there's a really strong argument that your work in medicine falls in line with national interest. I think that's fairly obvious. Um, but in addition to that, you have to show that, that your endeavor, that the work that you're doing, um, not just that the profession is important, but that your specific endeavor is important within that medicine field. And then, uh, and then on top of that, how you yourself are qualified to complete that endeavor. Um, and so that's where your publications, your, your renown in the field, your reputation um, falls in. But it is a much easier standard to meet than that extraordinary ability. So uh, for everyone who is not Indian or Chinese born national, I, I highly you know, encourage them to look at the NIW process. Thank you so much, Naveen, for this extremely insightful discussion about the route to green card through research. If any of you have any question about how to get a green card through research, I highly recommend you reach out to Naveen because this is a complicated process and I highly recommend doing it with a lawyer. If you're interested in learning more about research, make sure to check out our research course, which will give you all the practical information you need to know to take a research project from idea to publication. And I'll leave the link to that somewhere in the cards above on the right or the left and in the description below. Thank you everyone so much for watching and see you in future videos. Peace.